So I have some thoughts about Silent Hill 2 Remake. And just right off the bat, I want to say that I'm actually pleasantly surprised. I enjoyed the game. I thought it was really well done. I thought the Angela section in particular was gut-wrenching and the design of it was really good. I thought the, the way that the battle actually played out was kind of boring and annoying but like the actual just set dressing itself was really well done and that's what silent hill 2 remake does very well it's just set dressing the the aesthetic is is very beautiful it's very grim very dreary and i think they kind of mastered that i didn't have very much faith in bloober team going into this i'm not a huge fan of bloober team i thought the medium what with its rape apologia and weird take on mental health that if you're traumatized you kind of can't be saved was really weird i also thought the medium was just kind of a really bare walking simulator that was trying to pretend that it wasn't and it really didn't do anything all that interesting i did like the Blair Witch when I first played it. I haven't played it in a really long time. I actually forgot that Bloober Team made that, but I did enjoy that, although I haven't played it in a really long time, so I don't take my word for that. As far as their other games, The Painter or whatever it's called, and the other ones, I uh, haven't played those ones, although I have watched videos about them, and from what I've seen, it's like a lot of the same Bloober Team shtick, where they're really good with set design and, and, and map design and the aesthetics of horror without really the substance. So that's what I was expecting going into Silent Hill 2 Remake, though I remember telling a friend, you know, how bad can you fuck up a remake, right? It didn't seem like they were going to try to transform or retranslate the game in, a, in the way of like Final Fantasy VII Remake or a Resident Evil 4 Remake. Both of them are just trying to do completely different things than the original game did. They're not trying to fill the same space as the original. It felt like this was more along the lines of a Blue Point remake. They're remaking it from the ground up. They're modernizing it, but they're still trying to keep the same soul of the original. They're still trying to pretty much, maybe not exactly occupy the same space as the original, like a Shadow of the Colossus remake or a Demon Souls or a L The Last of Us Part One, which is still pretty funny. They were trying to modernize it and like tweak some things here and there while also still pretty much being the original game. The Silent Hill 2 remake turned out to be somewhere in between a Shadow of the Colossus remake and a Final Fantasy, or uh, not maybe not Final Fantasy VII, because that's really drastic, but a Resident Evil 4 remake, somewhere in between those two. And I want to talk about how the sort of the triple anus of this triple anus sort of makes it feel a little more vapid, a little more hollow, a little less compelling than the original. And this video is, if you can tell, very off the cuff. It's not scripted. I haven't been able to really do much of anything recently. I not, honestly don't even know if I'm going to put this out, but I just thought maybe I should just talk into a microphone like the old days and see how this goes. Just a little explanation of where I've been. I've been in a pit. I've been in a whole uh, mental health hole for the longest time this entire year basically i have a lot of shit going on it's not been great it's come to the point where i am every week every few days every day sometimes i'm just crying and the world kind of feels like shit it really feels bad there's still that thing going on in that one region of the world and it's getting worse that's driving me insane i have a video that i've made it's an hour and 40 minutes long about inception that i can't release because of youtube's bullshit copyright system it keeps getting claimed no matter what i do to the video it will continually get claimed and it's driving me so fucking up the wall I also have a friend, an ex-partner, I don't really know, we didn't really have a label. I think she has schizophrenia or something, and she's, I've watched her just completely be torn apart by this this thing, and also she's about to go homeless soon, all, all as a result of this illness. And she's kind of cut ties with me and her family, and now I don't know how to help her, and it's like, her time is running up. and. That's been really fucking eating me away at the inside, and I don't know what to do about it. So that's where I've been. I've learned that I might have bipolar 2 and that I I uh, probably have ADHD as well, which is interesting. The Inception video will be in the description of this video. It, it is fully done, it's fully edited, it's gonna be completely uncensored. There's a Google Drive link down in the description. You can download it, you can watch it from there. If you wanna leave me a few bucks on Ko-Fi, you can do that as a tip jar kind of thing. There really isn't gonna, I can't promise any new content on there. I hate the word content. Yeah, the watch the video totally for free. Uh, you don't have to be members or anything. You don't have to 
pledge to my Ko-Fi or whatever, you can just watch it. Um, and I'm going to do that in the future for any videos that are uncensored. If you want to leave me a few bucks on Ko-Fi, eventually I'm going to make a Patreon as well. It's just basically going to be a tip jar. Also, I just made a video game. Um, you guys can't play it because you probably don't have Dreams, which is a PlayStation 4 slash PlayStation 5 game that was made by the creators of Little Big Planet, Media Molecule. If you have a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5, Dreams is about 30 bucks or 40 bucks. And there's a whole wide array of games you can play on there and different experiences you can have on there. I've basically made three games or more like two and a half. The first one's called Waning. The second one is Waning Sea of Flame, which is just like a basically a DLC expansion pack to it. I think it's pretty good. But then what I think is even better is the game I just released, Waning the Rite of Spring, which is a spin-off game and it has all new mechanics and everything. You're seeing a bit of footage from it right now. If you have dreams, you can play it. If you don't have dreams, I'm eventually maybe going to make a video about both of the games so you can see them in action. It feels a little self-indulgent, kind of masturbatory, 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 but sometimes, I don't know, I feel like I really need to celebrate myself because I don't do it enough. I could use some self-celebration uh, these days. If you're interested in that game at all, I also have the full soundtrack of Waning the Rite of Spring, whose soundtrack I made entirely in dreams. That's available for free from the Google Drive link below uh, in the description if you want to listen to it. There's also this YouTuber, Gaming from Canada, who plays a lot of Dreams games. I'm hoping he plays The Rite of Spring soon, but he has played both Waning and Sea of Flame in the past. So you can check him out uh, if you want to uh, see those games. Back to Silent Hill 2 Remake. So mental health has really been on my mind quite a bit. For Silent Hill 2 Remake to have done it right, or at least have done it in a way that's inoffensive, means a lot. It's actually a really big deal, especially when it comes to like Angela's story. It, what was weird about Silent Hill 2 Remake is that it feels like Bloober's voice was really not in the game at all. It feels like they were really genuinely trying to just keep them, their own voice out of it as much as possible and let Silent Hill speak for Silent Hill. And I think they did a very good job of that. However, their voice still seeps through at very many points. There's a feeling, there's a vibe of the game that I can't shake. I couldn't shake the entire time I was playing through it. And it, it was, I was talking to my friends about it. I was like, I can't really name what this thing is. There's a vibe to it that makes it so much less compelling than the original Silent Hill 2. And not, I'm not the biggest Silent Hill buff in the world. I've played Silent Hill 2 about like two and a half times. I've played uh, one and three as well. I really like those games. I really like Silent Hill 2 especially. I think it's a very well done game. It frustrates me at times. I feel confused. I feel lost. But that confusion, that feel feeling of lostness, that feeling of not knowing what you're doing or where you're going and that frustration is also part of the experience that I feel like was, was toned a little back in the remake. That could be not Bloober's fault. That could just be because I knew what was coming. There was a lot that I was just kind of like, oh, I think this is going to happen, but maybe this happens first or whatever. And there's also things that I think they switched the order of. So that kept me on my toes a little bit. That part might not actually be their fault. But but there's some things about it where, you know, Silent Hill 2 original just feels so thoroughly, oppressively terrifying and not terrifying in the sense where you think something's going to jump out at you or sponge up all your bullets or 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 attack you from the darkness or whatever but there is there's also something else there's always this, this feeling that something is lying just beyond the dark some inscrutable thing that you can't even imagine it is, is like lying just beyond your sight and you're walking right to it and there's this feeling of pressure and tension and and just overwhelming dread that grips you while you're playing through Silent Hill original, Silent Hill 2 original, that doesn't grip me in the same way when I'm playing the remake. There's this one review I just saw on Steam, which is like, you know, I never finished the original, but I think I will after playing this. It's such a great game. And I think maybe that's what it is. If you haven't played the original, maybe Silent Hill 2 remake is perfect for you. But if you have played the original, then I just can't feel like the remake is a good enough replacement for it. I, When I was playing through the remake, I just kept feeling like, wow, I wish I was playing the original right now, which is not a feeling I've gotten while playing other remakes like Resident Evil 4 or Final Fantasy 7, or even like more faithful remakes like The Shadow of the Colossus or something like that. 
And again, this video is not scripted, so I apologize if my thoughts are a little over the place. It's not really a thesis here, and I'm probably not going to edit out all the ums and ahs, because honestly, I just haven't been in the headspace to make a, a video in a really long time. What is the problem with Silent Hill 2 Remake. And I put the problem in quotes here because I don't think this game is bad by any stretch of the imagination. I think it definitely has problems. It definitely has issues, but I don't think they're like, I don't think they're game breaking issues that are ruining the experience. I think this game overall is an amazing experience, but I, 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 I do feel like these are, there are certain qualities about them that I hope don't become staples. What I'm, what I'm trying to express is there's this AAA quality of Silent Hill 2 Remake that I think ultimately detracts from the experience. The game feels less serious. It feels less compelling. It, it feels like there's less driving me forward. And one of the main aspects of that is the presentation, surprisingly enough. The game is like too pretty for its own good. I remember starting up the game looking to see if I could find some kind of film grain setting because Silent Hill 2 has this like really oppressive, really thick film grain on it that makes everything just that much, that tiny little bit harder to see. And you know, in, in this Silent Hill 2 remake, you can see all the enemies in full definition. You can see their legs, their feet, their arms, their the way that they twitch and move. You get to know each of their anima animations so intimately and it makes them that much less scary. They're like way less serious as a result. Stephanie Sterling has a video about how, you know, you see the mannequins over and over and over and over and over again, and then they become just way less of a threat. They become annoying to a point. By the end of the game, I was so sick to fucking death of the sight of mannequins that I no longer want to see even real life shop dummies again for as long as I live. No amount of words can do justice to the genuinely fucking ludicrous number of mannequins hiding behind things that have been comprehensively soaked into the entire game. From their introduction in the apartment to the very final act. They are everywhere and they have that one trick. They hide behind something and try to ambush you. This weak attempt at a jump scare occurred so astoundingly often that before the game was even halfway over, I became able to predict if a room had a mannequin in it based purely on its furniture and layout. I could walk into a room, see some shelving units, say, there's a mannequin in there, and I'd be right. I would always be right. And I agree, I, I, I initially really liked the way, when I first saw a mannequin scurry away and run away, I was like, oh shit, that's like a cool behavior. It's going to run and hide and I have to find it and it's going to attack me if I sign my flashlight on it without attacking it. And that's really cool, like genuinely really cool behavior. But then you see them over and over and over again to the point where they were the only an enemy that I cared about because they're the only enemy I actually had to shoot because they would jump out you at you. They dodge your fucking attacks like a boxer, which I think is so stupid. And that's one of the issues. The way that the enemies behave, the way that combat works, the fact that there's a dodge button at all, how absolutely on point and ridiculous some of the enemy tracking is. The fact that James is like fucking shooting around like with the dodge button he's just sliding around the map and enemies are also sliding around in this sort of weird sort of ufc dance and it just feels so unnatural and weird and video gamey combat in general just feels so much more action focused the, you know you have the grabs and the quick time events and vaulting Vaulting in particular is very useful for sort of stun locking the nurses who are particularly stupid in this game. I never really ever had to waste bullets on them. And I did because sometimes they were with other enemies. But if I ever found a nurse by itself or with another nurse, I rarely had to waste any bullets on it because I, I could just get it stuck in a vaulting loop. And just like I run over, I vault over something, the nurse vaults over to catch me. And then while it's vaulting, I just hit it and then vault over again. And I this is something I found by myself without looking up any guides on my first playthrough. Yeah, it just made the enemy so unserious. And so the mannequins were the only ones where I actually had to shoot them because of the way they behaved, how erratic they were. But it wasn't scary. It was just like, okay, I walk into a room. Okay, I bet there's a mannequin in here. Where is it? Where's the mannequin? Is there a mannequin? And then there was, and either it would catch me off guard sometimes because I just didn't see it right before it attacked me or 
I was about to shoot, but I missed my shot or something. Or sometimes there's another enemy I was looking at and the mannequin would hit me while I was looking at the other enemy. I was able to manipulate the AI quite a bit, especially with the nurses, like luring them to places and hitting them while they were trying to get back to their pathfinding. It, it just felt like a triple A game in that sense, where I was able to take advantage of how modernized it was in order to make the game a lot easier. Like I knew that if I hit the nurses from behind, they would fall easier. I knew that if I vaulted over something, they would try to vault after me. I knew that if I got to a certain point, they would try to return to their path and I could hit them while they were turning away. Things like that. I knew that if I squeezed through a little crack in the wall, the nurse would try to squeeze after me or whatever enemy would try to squeeze after me and things like that. I knew that if I went down this hallway and picked up an item or put down an item and solved a puzzle that an enemy would respawn or an enemy would uh, come back to life or an enemy would spawn on my way back or would spawn in the room and trap me in there until I dealt with them. Things like that, little things like that, that kind of, it's like this triple A-ism that you kind of expect, that which makes the game feel like it's going through the motions. As far as the story, there were a few changes here and there. Uh, nothing that really made me feel s this this lack of compulsion. I thought the story was actually kind of the best part of the whole experience. It was just a lot of the gameplay stuff that, that, that did this. The fact that there were so many chase sequences. I think there were about three chase sequences and they all kind of felt the same where it's just like I'm running and get to the area that I need to get to in order to proceed with the game. It's not really scary. It's not really tense. It's just like, oh, I'm in a chase sequence. Let me finish this chase sequence kind of thing. Felt like it was sort of trying to be Resident Evil light in that way. This chase sequence in particular, I just replayed it and it really exemplifies the difference between the remake and the original game. In the original, Maria runs slower than you and you have to worry about her getting hit by Pyramid Head as you navigate these really tight corners. You have to use your handgun in order to slow Pyramid Head down as you try to progress forward and you can't see the way that you're going. In the original, there's no cutscene. Pyramid Head just starts chasing you. You can barely see him as he's coming down the hallway and it's genuinely scary. In the remake, there's this cutscene leading into it which throws away all the tension. You can't use your weapons, you just have to run forward. Maria runs faster than you. And there are all these bombastic set pieces like walls being crashed down and everything which just feels so Resident Evil-y. Which Resident Evil is not bad, I love Resident Evil, but it just doesn't fit here. The fact that each boss fight had like multiple phases now and very obvious phases and tells. So there's also the issue of um, glitches, and I know some people are going to think this isn't fair, but there, the fact of the matter is these things weren't in the original game and they come about as a result of <clears throat> a certain sort of game direction. As a result of the game direction, they do have uh, an impact on the atmosphere of the game and how how the game feels to play. Some things like, even minor things like ragdolling. They didn't have to have ragdolling in the game. The original game did not have ragdolling, but it is a triple A-ism. The ragdolling does affect the gameplay. It, 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 it makes it less scary. It makes it less compelling. When you see an enemy lying on the ground ragdolling, it just makes them funny. It makes them not a force to be reckoned with, not something to be feared, but something to laugh at. And then also it does have an effect on the fear, but in a weird way where you know, when you get too far from an enemy and then you turn your camera or whatever and they load back in, they get drawn back into the scene and their cloth physics or their limbs will sometimes like fall. And then you're like, oh shit, is the enemy getting back up? But like, no, it's just that they're ragdolling. <laughs> when you realize that that's what's happening and it's not that they're getting back up, it just makes the whole thing so much less serious. There's also the issue of pathfinding being fucked in a lot of places. I've gotten pyramid head stuck before. Nurses who got stuck at least four or five different times, maybe more, where enemies were just stuck in place. They just couldn't move. And I was able to either get cheap shots on them or get up real close to them 
Yeah, it just makes the whole thing feel like a triple A game. And that's not to say the game is intense. It is tense. Like the atmosphere is really is really well done, I think, but then there's just little things that like kind of needle at you that makes the whole thing feel so much less serious than the original. And then there's also the aspect of it which I would call the Batman Arkham Knight problem, which is just like things that feel so video gamey. Things like James repeatedly throughout the game sticking his hand in walls or jumping down holes over and over and over again and it's the same kind of quick time event sequence that happens over and over and it's just like okay like i get it like he did it in the first game he put his hand in the toilet or whatever and it was really gross like now we're doing it again and again and again. I don't remember how many times he did it in the original game. I feel like it was like once or twice at most. Um, then he jumps down the hole like a few times. But in this game, it just felt like it was just going through the motions. It was like, hey, remember this thing? Now we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. And I'm going to sound really stupid if like it happens a bunch of times in the original. And I just don't remember. But even then, it's just like the original doesn't feel like it's, it's playing into it as much. Uh, maybe it's spread out better in that game, or maybe there just aren't as many instances of it in that one. In this one, it just felt like it was just constantly trying to remind you of all, like, oh, wasn't this moment cool? Like, let's do it again. Just to exemplify exactly this feeling of the game kind of streamlining things in a way that detracts from what the original was trying to do. Right before you get to the prison, you jump down the hole, and the original you're in this hole and you have to start hitting the walls until you find the one spot where it breaks open. And you can feel really lost in this moment. You can feel like you really have no idea what to do. You're just kind of freaking out. You're like, wait, why am I stuck here? Is the game broken? Like, how do I get through? Until you just start hitting the wall and eventually you make it through. In the remake, there's just like, I think there's three different spots that you can break and you know that you can break them because they're the same exact kind of breakable walls as you see in other parts of the game and I just happened to get it on my first try where I broke the wall and it was the right way but the other two lead to a dead end but it's that same sort of thing where it's like oh I've seen this kind of wall before I know exactly what to do where you know it's 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 so codified the game is so codified and it's so pristine and clean and it's it's very triple a it's presenting everything to you in a in a very accessible language where silent hill 2 is is very inaccessible sometimes it's very esoteric it doesn't tell you always what you need to do and i think that's part of the the that's part of the magic of it that's part of the the frustration and annoyance that the game presents to you that is actually a part of the experience it wants you to feel that sense of dread that sense of oppression like you really are crawling from one space to another but nowhere is safe and nowhere feels familiar and nowhere feels like your your you know where to go i think that's the best i've got as far as just putting a voice to the feeling i had going through it i just kept thinking wow i i, I wish i was playing the original and again not to say that the game was bad or anything i actually think it was very good very well made very impressive at times but uh i just i i don't know if i'm the only one who feels this way where there's something about the the remake that's just lacking is something about it that feels like it doesn't have the same soul of the original it doesn't have the same kind of like vice grip on my nerves that the original had and maybe you know maybe that's okay uh maybe you know it wasn't trying to do that maybe you know it is a herculean task to remake such a beloved classic for all intents and purposes they did a really good job with it but uh yeah those are just my thoughts i haven't been able to sit down and work on a video in so long i just spent like hours trying to redo the inception video add stills instead of footage and and blur out a bunch of stuff and it still got copyright claimed and and that's that's like a tame version usually it just gets blocked worldwide the video link to the inception video the full uncensored one will be in the google drive link in the description and um there will be a google drive link for the uh the rite of spring original soundtrack um in the description that was made entirely in dreams for my game i hope this video um meant something to someone i don't know if it was just gonna make someone mad uh, and get like a billion dislikes or whatever but it's not going to be my most edited video and i apologize for that i just really i felt like i wanted to express myself on this because i felt like no one else i haven't seen anyone else really saying this the closest was stephanie sterling with their video but yeah i i um thanks for my, for watching <clears throat> take care have a good one
And I'll see you when I see you. Bye, guys. Oh.